Uh, those, most of you, I think, in the audience obviously know me for the benefit of the media. My name is Les, and my last name is Kinstad, and I'm the affordable housing manager for the city of Sioux Falls. And so I want to thank you, uh, all the folks who could come down. They're partners of ours that support us and make these kinds of uh, efforts go. Uh, I could talk for a long time, but I won't, uh, about the people that made this all come about. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but we're pretty excited today. Uh, a lot of times when you work in the public sector, one of the things that I know I've looked for for years and we try to find is to have data-driven decisions or, or actual bona fide measures of what we do. And uh, for a long time, uh, Darren Smith, uh, Darren Ketchum's predecessor, Darren Ketchum and myself uh, had talked about this program and said, we really want to have something that's a bona fide, legitimate, objective third party take uh, of what we're a look at what we do in this program so that's kind of the culmination today uh, you uh, have the link in the news release which will take you to the actual report itself we have some folks here today that i'll introduce briefly and then get out of the way um cindy dan and bring cindy's uh, been in on, on a number of different news conferences that we've had we have different programs with them but cindy's the director of the interlakes community action partnership and they are the entity that runs the Bright Futures program. So her and a number of her staff people, I won't try to introduce everybody, but they're there in the audience along with some of our partners and uh, be recognized here in a little bit as well. Uh, Suzanne Smith, Susie Smith from Augustana Research Institute is here today. She's the principal researcher on the study and uh, has done a, just a wonderful job of, of coming up with something that stands up to scrutiny and uh, is based on, like I said earlier, solid research principles and and we're uh, delighted to have her here and really happy that Augie could help us with the study. Uh, so thank you very much. And then lastly, uh, Shauna Jensen is here as well. Shauna is the lady in the front in the green uh, top and she uh, will be speaking. She's a, a person that graduated from uh, the Bright Futures program and you give you a little bit of an idea of, of uh, what is involved and what it does and how it affects someone's life. So with that, I'll get uh, out of the way and uh, Cindy, you want to give them some history and, and details on the operation of the program. Good afternoon. The Bright Futures program was established in 2011 as a response to the need for additional comprehensive services for homeless families with children. At that time, our agency, Interlakes Community Action Partnership, had been administering the Heartland House program for a number of years. That program was at capacity always and had a lengthy waiting list. Sioux Falls Community Development, under the direction of Darren Smith, shared our con concern with this dilemma, and the Bright Futures program was born. Through this program, families receive rental assistance, but in addition are required to participate in case management and tenant education classes. The goal of the program is to empower families to make measurable strides toward financial independence. A housing stabilization plan is developed by the family with the input of their coach. This plan becomes a roadmap of how they will attain their goals. Bright Futures is not an easy program. The plan um, that the families follow is their plan and it requires commitment and it requires accountability. I wish I could tell you that every family is successful, but that, that just wouldn't be the reality. I want to thank our partners who have been there from, from the beginning with us and, and have helped us make this program a success. Sioux Falls um, Housing and Redevelopment Commission and Carl Fulmer, they operate the rental assistance portion of the program. Serum Barrier Housing Partnership, Jim Schmidt, and Kelly Zimmer do the tenant education that the families are also um, required to take. And of course, Sioux Falls Community Development, our funder, who without them, Les and Darren Ketchum, without them this program couldn't continue and couldn't help the many families that we've helped. 
So thank you all for being here today. Before we go on and, and have our main speaker for today, I also wanted to probably did not thoroughly enough recognize the contribution of Augustana College to uh, or Augustana University. I still back a number of years ago calling it a college uh, in the work that they've done. Uh, Augustana Research Institute fulfills a vital role in the community in terms of providing a source for us for the kind of research that needs to be done. Uh, so we really want to give credit to them. Pam Holman is here representing the, uh, the university as well. And uh, Pam, thank you for your leadership and the leadership of Augustana and Susie in uh, doing this with us. So thank you very much. So uh, Susie, do you want to tell them about the study? Hi, I'm Suzanne Smith. I'm the director at the Augustana Research Institute. And I'm going to walk you through some of the high-level findings from the study of Bright Futures. Uh, the full report, as Les mentioned, is available online now, so you can find that. The purpose of this report, really, was to assess whether and to what degree Bright Futures successfully increases self-sufficiency for participants, both financial self-sufficiency and also housing stability. What we did for this evaluation was really um, two parts. The first part of the study and, and the bulk of the study was a retrospective pre-post comparison. What I mean by that is that we looked at families who entered Bright Futures at the time that they entered the program, and we compared that to how those same families looked at the time they left the program. We spent most of this winter from December through March combing through administrative records, case files, um, all of the documentation of what had happened to these families during their time in Bright Futures, dating all the way back to the program's founding in 2011. We also conducted a follow-up survey with graduates of the program who had left the program anywhere between six months and six years ago. Uh, and I do owe a debt of gratitude to those participants who took the time to complete that survey and to share their experiences with us. I know I learned a lot from them. The second part of the study was a quasi-experimental comparison where we looked at Bright Futures families and compared them to similar families who had received a housing choice voucher or rental assistance but had not received case management. The purpose of that comparison was twofold. First, we wanted to be able to control for background changes that might have happened in the community while these participants were in Bright Futures. We wanted to be able to say that if Bright Futures participants did increase their earnings or did increase their employment, it really was because of something that happened in Bright Futures and not something that all families in Sioux Falls had experienced during that time period. So we needed a comparison group. The second purpose of this comparison was to really test the effect of adding case management on top of rental assistance. Uh, to see what difference it makes to have someone coaching and uh, providing life skills in addition to subsidizing the expense of your month-to-month -month rent. So the comparison group was similar families. They were homeless, they had children, the head of household was able to work, but they did not receive case management was the key difference. Now here's what we found. From entry to exit, Pro, the families who participated in Bright Futures did indeed see a significant increase in their earnings, their employment rate, and they also saw a significant reduction in their use of public assistance, things like SNAP, TANF, or SSI, and also a reduction in their use of rental assistance. What's important here is that these families also saw a net increase in their income even after we accounted for that loss of benefits. Their increase in wages was sufficient to not only offset their loss of benefits, but to yield an increase in take-home pay at the end of the day on top of that. In our comparative analysis, looking at those families who did not receive case management, during the same time period, we did not see any significant change in those same outcomes. In other words, the comparison corroborated our hypothesis that it is bright futures and something about the case management that leads to the outcomes we saw for Bright Futures participants. Now since 2011, let's talk about numbers. There have been 67 families who graduated from the programs for whom we had complete records. 
By the time they left the program, those 67 graduates, 97% of them were employed, almost all of them full-time. They had increased their annual earnings from wages by nearly $10,000 a year, the equivalent of receiving a 76% raise during the time they were in Bright Futures. If you take all 67 of those graduates together, in one year they brought home nearly $650,000 in additional earnings to their families. At the same time, those Bright Futures graduates reduced their reliance on public assistance. Again, that's things like SNAP, TANF, or SSI, by about $179 per month. And they also reduced their use of rental assistance by about $152 per month. If you add up those changes for all, 100, for all 67 graduates of Bright Futures, we're talking nearly $144,000 less in public assistance drawn by those families each year and about $122,000 less in rental assistance drawn by those families each year. Now that's a one-year snapshot. We also projected out the expected earnings over participants' lifetime in order to calculate the expected return of an investment in Bright Futures. And we found that for every $1 invested in the Bright Futures program, Sioux Falls can expect to see over $8 in returns in terms of increased weight increased earnings from wages for those participants. I mentioned we did a follow-up survey with graduates who had finished the program years ago. And in that follow-up survey, we found evidence that the gains these families make during Bright Futures are indeed long-lasting. Bright Futures stabilizes financial situations, it stabilizes housing, and graduates who finish the program are able to maintain those gains over the long term. When we spoke to graduates, in this survey. Those graduates not only talked about Bright Futures as a housing program, but perhaps more significantly talked about what they had learned in terms of money management, goal setting, and moral support that they received from their case managers. The graduates said that the stability they gained during the Bright Futures program not only put them on more stable footing, but actually served as a launching pad for them to make additional progress after the program. So that in the follow-up survey, we heard from graduates who had gone back to school and who, in fact, had become homeowners years after leaving the Bright Futures program. But I am perhaps not best positioned to tell those stories, and so I am going to turn it over to Cindy once more to introduce someone else. And one of those people that Susie shared information on is Shanna Jansen. Shanna graduated from the Bright Futures program, and I invite her to come forward and talk to you a little bit about her experience. Um, Bright Futures actually taught me a lot um, to be very self-sufficient, um, to handle my money very well. Um, it also taught me to be more grown up than what I was before. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, it taught me a lot. Um, I didn't really have nowhere to stay at first, and um, I was actually taking my son to the Inner Lakes for the daycare, and then I met Elda, and um, I got into the Bright Futures program. Um, and after that, my pretty much my whole life changed. Um, it taught me how to manage my money the right way. Um, I didn't really have a credit score at the time, and it taught me how to build up my credit. Um, and it's it took me a long ways. I'm doing really well now. I've had the same job for three years now. Um, I have a five-year-old boy, and I have a daughter that's one now. Um, I don't know. I'm not really sure what else to say. This is my first time being up like this so <laughs> um, but yeah it, it taught me a lot um, it's, at first you know I was like oh she gets all my checks I don't know if I like that but you know what I loved it after that I was like oh wow you know and I was very happy that I went into that program because um, it did it taught me a whole lot 